Welcome back everybody, Mike McConville here again one more time for String Tech Workstations. We've got a vintage looking telly here and we're going to be putting one of these Vibramate, which is essentially a non-invasive Bigsby install. So we're going to walk you through that step by step. We're also dropping a, a Duncan uh, Little 59 telly pickup. And in we are also going to swap out these intonated saddles, which have a different focal point for each string all the way across with the saddles that came with this bridge. We're not going to use these saddles, so we're taking these saddles out, swapping them over. You'll see as we go, we'll be giving you a play-by-play. -play. Just so that we're not backtracking or repeating steps, we're going to move on this guitar starting by swapping out the actual bridge plates and putting that replacement pickup in. So on this bridge we have a, a ground wire attached to that screw. So this is the bridge that came with this thing, but I'm going to swap these saddles over. Swap the whole thing out so we got a guitar that we can tune. You want to keep these in order, these ones. One out, one in. I find it easier to just wind those on a little bit first. I'm leaving clearance so I can get those screws back in. So next, our little 59 Seymour Duncan pickup. Now we're ready to go back to the guitar. Now we'll drop that replacement bridge into place. And we've got that original ground wire that was on the uh, bridge we just took off. Here's where it gets interesting. So this piece just kind of slides in like so, and the strap button just goes right back in where it came out. Boy, they have really thought out the engineering on this thing. This would be a great video for you guys to be able to just sort of do this yourself at home. So this is the Vibramate plate. These are the saddles that I swapped over from the original Fender Bridge. We've got our Seymour Duncan pickup in. Now the bevel in those screw heads actually pulls this into perfect alignment. So we'll slip those rubber washers off. Very clever engineering. This just drops into place like so. Put your little rubber washers back on. So the idea is there's no holes drilled into your precious vintage telly. Uh, by the way, this is the very first one I've ever installed. So I thought I would take the time to kind of walk everybody through it. Get these other two washers on. So don't over tighten these things. It doesn't take a lot of torque. And because of the casting, the way these the way these things are made, uh, it doesn't sit on there flush, but it doesn't need a lot of torque because you've got that rubber washer under there. So those are snugged down. I am the first to give credit when credit is due. And you know, these Vibramate guys have <laughs> really thought this thing through. For anyone that's had a Bigsby, they know exactly how much of a pain in the butt these things can be. That claw just clips onto the pins. It eliminates the necessity of having to push the, the ball end onto the little post. Okay, we got our bridge pickup wired in and our bridge ground wired back in. Put a few tie wraps on there to clean that up. And now we can just tuck that right back into place.
One thing they don't really cover in the instructions is sometimes with a Bigsby, and this is the case here, you need to tilt the neck back to get a little bit more pressure on the focal point of the saddles. So we'll put that very thin mahogany veneer on the inside edge of that socket to tilt the neck back ever so slightly and that will give us a little bit more pressure at the focal point on the saddle like I said. I do still have the strings on. I haven't tensioned it, it's not tuned, but just to strap that down. There we go. So we get a good tracing for that mahogany shim. Let's trace that out. I like to put these shims on with a little two-sided tapes so nothing shifts around on us. The other reason for the two-sided tape is this veneer is so fragile, so thin that it kind of holds it together so it doesn't disintegrate. That will give us what we need. Let's take another look. So as you saw, the, the Bigsby's installed and that uh, 59, little 59 Tele pickup is installed, the Duncan. We adjusted those three compensated Tele saddles. But before I do the compensated nut, I wanted to demonstrate with your regular nut. So we play the open E and F. Our open G and A flat. There's our B and our C. There's our open first string and F. I'll be putting the compensated nut on this thing in the morning and then we'll come back and we'll check that note for note. We are approaching the wrap up on this so let me just kind of walk you through what we've done so far. Okay, I've got all these original parts that came out in case the originality police show up at some time. He can put them in a little baggie and tuck them away somewhere. These saddles are now radiused even though there was a rough sort of compensation done on each of those three saddles I did end up lining up one string perfectly and then filing the other half of the saddle to get that second string to be in tune. I did that all the way across. They are now perfectly in tune and you'll hear it in a second. Of course, our Bigsby is on there now and uh, works beautifully actually and we got that ingenious claw that these Vibromate guys came up with. Uh, we have our Duncan Little 59 uh, Telecaster Bridge pickup in there as well. Just roughing in the final values for this compensated nut. That's why I recorded last night with the standard nut so that we can you make a little taste test comparison. The lion's share of the work has been done, but we still have a fly in the ointment here. We've got a high spot here, we've got a high spot here, and we've got a high spot here. The issue with the maple neck is there's more work just to masking the whole thing off than there is to doing the actual fret dress. So uh, we've got to pull the strings off, mask off the entire fingerboard, and skim this whole thing end to end. I mean, the good thing is we'll get rid of the little bit of fret wear that's in there already. And that is the final call. This guitar will be 100% perfectly in tune, smooth as silk, with the tremolo balanced and the new pickup. He'll be good to go for the long haul.
Well, because the height adjustment for this pickup is underneath the pick guard, we need to remove the pick guard to do a fret dress. just to nick off those eye spots on a rosewood fingerboard or ebony fingerboard you don't have to bother with all this fussing with the masking but there's no way around it you make a mess of that maple in a hurry and even though it's road worn well you don't want black smudges all over you maple without a finish on it is very susceptible to smudging and black marks. I don't want to add any more wear to it than uh, was intentionally initiated by Fender. There was multiple high spots here so I'm just you can feel that file grabbing. Okay. I guess the good thing about this for Matt is that the guitar will be 100% when you're done. And that's how frets should look when perfected. So every trace of wear is out of this. This is way better than the day it left the factory. It is mint. Telecaster. So there's their Bigsby, there's our little 59 Tele Duncan pickup, and I have actually filed out those compensated saddles so they, this is perfectly in tune. Uh, and, and of course complete frack dress and, and a compensated nut. So I have this loop that I did actually on Kevin's Les Paul. That was the uh, Orville by Gibson. So I still have that loop on my loop station. So I thought I would play some things on Matt's tally over top of that Les Paul. And then you can hear the two guitars and how all these different harmonic mechanisms or chords are all perfectly in tune, full length of the neck. So here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you.